Today we study X 18 Q in English for simple and delta harmonic oscillations. You can access K-pop lectures in various ways. First of all, you can visit kpop.org and uh, there are lectures and X 18 is here. You can click this button to find X18, the original version, and C is checkpoints, and this is X18Q. You will find the lectures by clicking and uh, you can also visit the, directly to the YouTube site called K-pop Collaboration by typing uh, youtube.com at K-pop. Okay. Let's begin. Oh, in the PDF file, there are links and you can click here to find the Korean version and English version and this the kpop.org site can be accessed by clicking this and you can subscribe to kpop channel on YouTube. Okay, we consider the equation of motion for a simple harmonic oscillator when this uh, E term is absent with this, we call it simple harmonic oscillator. This equation can be written in this form mx double dot equals minus bx dot minus kx. This one is called the damping term, and this one is called the restoring force following the Hooke's law. Here, M is the mass, B is the damping coefficient, K is the spring constant, X is the displacement from the equilibrium point when this damping coefficient vanishes. So, this is net force on the particle of mass m because m a m times acceleration is the net force so we have uh, two forces first of all we have a minus kx that is the restoring force and uh, minus uh, b x dot that is the damping force these all of these coefficients mass damping coefficients and spring constant they are all positive numbers okay the three terms mx double dot bx dot and kx must be of the same dimensions as a force because it is expressed as a f equals ma all right, let us check the dimensions. All, all, all these three terms are of the same physical dimensions. Mass, length, time squared in the denominator. So mass times acceleration. We know dimension of x is uh, length and velocity, length divided by time. Acceleration is at length divided by time squared. We can find what the dimensions of B are. So Bx dot, that is a force. X dot is velocity, length divided by time. As a result, LL cancels. We have mass over time. What are the dimensions of the spring constant? Kx has the dimensions of uh, force. This is length, 
length length cancels mass divided by time squared. What is the general solution to the differential equation? So, equation of motion is the differential uh, kind of differential equation. The beginning of solving the differential equation originates from the construction of the equation of motion and solving the uh, uh, find out the solution. Simplest uh, differential equation is there are many, but we can think about it. We already know what the exponential function is, and the exponential function can be used to solve this problem. Okay, derivative of exponential function is itself. We can make a separate the variables, and we divide the both sides by exponential x to move this one to the left hand side, and multiply the differential dx to both sides, we have this kind of form. We make the substitution y equals exponential x, then the left hand side simplifies into dy over y equals dx. Now the right hand side is the total differential of x, we can integrate both sides. By the way, we remember that log function is the inverse function of the exponential function. So this, these two are equivalent, and we know y is positive definite, and x can be any real number. All right. Because x is log y, y is dx, is total differential of log y. As a result, the x has been replaced with this. All right. The first of the differential equation, that is our question, can always be integrable as we have done previously. So for an arbitrary f, we generalize this result and divide both sides by f of x, multiply both sides by dx, and we have this part. By the way, this one is identical to total differential of log y. Now we replace y with the f of x. Therefore, the left hand side becomes the total differential of log f of x. Still, right inside is the x. We can integrate both sides from somewhere, a fixed point, to an arbitrary number. Then, still, this equality holds. The result of the left-hand side is nothing but the difference of this log f of x. Evaluated at x and evaluated at x zero. Right hand side is also trivial. It is at x minus x zero. All right, we can combine the difference of two log. That is the log of the ratio, f of x divided by f of x zero. Now. We can make use of the fact that log is an exponential function. Uh, log is the inverse function of the exponential function. We arrive at the point f of x divided by f of x0 is exponential x minus x0. We multiply both sides by f of x0 then we find this. And then, why don't we pull this out 
x minus x0, that is e to the x0, e to the x. So we define f of x0 divided by e to the x0, this one, by an arbitrary constant c, because it is completely determined by a single parameter x0, and that is arbitrary. As a result, we can make use of chain rule to extend this idea that this f of x is an arbitrary constant multiplied by exponential function if a function's derivative is itself. So as well as exponential x, this can also be a solution and arbitrary number multiplied by exponential x, all of them are the solutions of this differential equation. Next, we consider the case when the argument is replaced with plus minus some number multiplied by x. We can make use of chain rule to find that derivative of plus minus ax is plus minus a. Therefore, the derivative of this function is identical to this, and in addition, we have to multiply this additional factor. If I make use of this identity twice, the second order derivative of the same function is this times exponential plus minus ax. All right, so let us make use of these results to find the solutions of these two trivial equations. We previously solved this equation and the solution was the arbitrary constant exponential x. Now the solution for this equation according to this previous result we find that we have additional factor a in front of x. In a similar manner, second, if the second order derivative of function is some number square and that function, the result is either exponential ax or exponential minus ax in even the sum of arbitrarily linear combination of these two. Because the second of the derivative of this is this, both of them have the, has the same, same thing. As a result, f of x is a linear combination of these two functions with c1 and c2, arbitrary complex constant. All right, why don't we consider a more trivial case when the parameter a is exactly zero? This one is a really trivial. The answer is constant. What about the second derivative of function is zero? I can integrate this equation twice. First, integral. We have c2 of x, a c2, and then we make an additional integral, and we have a constant plus c2 multiplied by x. So this is the general solution for the second differential equation equals zero. So this is just first of the polynomial. Find the general solution to the simple harmonic oscillator. Now we find b equals zero. So this system has the restoring force only. F equals minus mx double dot 
equals minus kx. The equation of motion is equivalent to this, and we divide both sides by m. All right. So this is equivalent to solve the equation for some parameter square equals k over m. That's our problem. Because k and m are positive, a must be plus minus, a must be plus minus i square root k over m. So, we have two solutions and their linear combination is the most general solution for this f of t. And a is a, okay, a can be chosen as a plus, and our final solution will be a plus minus a t exponential. So, we have c1 exponential i square root k over m. This is a positive number time. And the same, except that the overall sign is negative. We know the Euler's formula, that is exponential, i something, some real number, is a cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. As a result, this one can be a linear combination of cosine and sine, this one too. So we recombine, so rearrange the expression as a linear combination of cosine and sine. Because alpha is a, alpha is a square root of k over mt, so our solution can also be written as a linear combination of cosine and sine. In addition, we can combine these two to find out the, through the amplitude. And then remaining piece becomes the parameter expressed in terms of cosine and sine of a parameter such as delta or something. As a result, this one can also be written in the sign square root k over mt plus some phase or cosine. So that's fine. All, all of them represent the same general solution for that differential equation that is the equation for the simple harmonic oscillator. Next, we consider we reparameterize the equation of motion for a damped harmonic oscillator. We learned in the previous case of this x18 and q, we simplified the expression for the quadratic equation mx squared plus bx plus k equals zero. We used a very, very similar method. But in here, we introduce some new function of time that is not exactly the same as y, uh, x, but we rescale, scale out the exponential time-dependent factor. We can make a guess that this equation for y does not have the linear term, the, the first order differential uh, derivative term. If it is not the case, we have to find another way, but fortunately, we shall find that it can be expressed in a simple way, that whose solutions are well known because we already solved these kind of equations already. All right, so why don't we compute the derivative of x when x, uh, x sub t is an exponential lambda t, y t, where lambda is, an, is a constant that should be determined appropriately. 
we take the time derivative of this x. We use Leibniz rule. Derivative of the first one is lambda y exponential. Derivative of the second one is y dot and exponential. This one has been factored out. What about double dot? Second of the time derivative of x can be computed using still using the Leibniz rule. Second of the derivative, lambda squared y. This is two times the first order derivative product of the first order derivative of uh, exponential and y. So the result is two times lambda y dot. This one y dot y double dot. And all of them is the common factor exponential lambda t. We substitute these in here and find out the equation for y. In here, everything has the factor exponential lambda t, and this one can never be a zero. It is always positive definite. So I can remove this part. Okay, we arrive at the point that this y double dot missing y dot term is possible when this one equals a zero. So we can determine the parameter lambda to be minus b over 2m. Okay, so we substitute this value to here and here to simplify the expression to find the parameter a square. The result is here. This one has been vanished because of this condition, and we have substituted b over 2m minus b over 2m in here, and here minus b over 2m multiplied by m. So mm cancels in here. Finally, we can express this one. We can both divide both by by m and move this one to the right hand side. And finally, we arrive at the point that the expression is nothing but k over m negative sign and b over 2m. What's that? B. We have to divide m one more time, so b over 2m squared. As a result, we can. Make use of this result because a, a squared is this. Our final solution is x of t. x of t is exponential lambda t, and lambda equals minus b over 2m. This one has been factored out, and uh, I'd like to know the solution for y. The solution is. Because this is a, so we have c1 e to the a t plus c2 e to the minus a t. Uh, this is a squared, a squared. So a is square root b over 2m square minus k minus m. So this is the answer. By the way, this one is a real if b okay so, so the sign of the the argument of the square root can change the sign depending on the relative size of the b and k therefore we first consider the case if these two are the same if they are the same then the solution is not like this, but we have y double dot equals 0. When y double dot equals 0, y equals c1 plus c2t. Okay? And then we, we have this vector, 
exponential lambda minus exponential lambda t factor appear here. So we call the special case is called the critically damped case. The next case, this b over 2m is greater than square root k over m. In that case, this argument of the square root is positive. So the solution has the same exponential lambda t and remaining piece, a linear combination of the two exponential functions. We recall that cosine hyperbolic of x is 1 half e to the x plus e to the minus x. Sine hyperbolic x equals 1 half, same thing, but difference. So this, these exponential functions can be expressed in terms of cosine hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic with the same argument. So this one and this one, they are the same parametrizations, although the coefficients uh, may be different. Remember, the, as the last one, when square root to k over m is greater than b over 2m, then this oscillating, this restoring force is uh, very strong in comparison with the damping force. In that case, the argument of the exponential becomes negative, so we have to, we had better to pull out the pure imaginary factor i. Then the expression inside argument becomes a positive. Again, we make use of Euler's formula to express this one as a linear combination of sine and cosine. In comparison with the simple harmonic oscillator that does not have any B dependence, where is it? Well, is it simple harmonic oscillator? Here. The solution has the frequency, angular frequency omega, a zero we call, so square root k over m. This is the angular frequency of the solution for the simple harmonic oscillator. So we compare that frequency, omega zero, k over m. Because of this uh, subtraction by a positive number, angular frequency of the damped harmonic oscillator is uh, slightly smaller than the original simple harmonic oscillator. It's, it, it's, uh, it has some delay of action because of the damping force that is against the motion of the particle. So all of these kind of calculation can be checked by making use of this uh, mathematical result, mathematical program. So why don't we copy this result? Uh, program. This is x18. x18q. Copy this and bring in a mathematical session. Copy the program. Shift enter. It gives zero. Zero means uh, I'm checking what I have carried out, checking the computation of this, uh, finding the solution. So you, you can make use of that program.
to reproduce the results given in here. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.